little dog. Let me put this. Hold on. Post. Pin. All right, my other phone is charging. Be on my Galaxy. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. These dogs want to ruin, just run me, my whole life. They want to run my whole life. I'm not allowed to have a life without these dogs being on top of me. Hey, hey, hey. You're, you're itching. You need medication. You want mommy to put the drops in, baby? I think somebody might need eardrops. You want the eardrops, boo? What you doing? You don't know this two. This is all day with these two girl dogs. They smell food on me. I just came home from the city. I was eating. What you smell? Chicken? They smell chicken on me. Does that smell like chicken? Oh, I love you. Come on, siblings. Hi. Baby Yoda's looking for you. Oh, my God. You guys don't understand. I don't get a break. This is all day, every day, unless I put them in the kitchen and put up the baby gate. But I love all this love. I can't lie. I love it. I love it. When I tell you I love them so much, I love you. I love you. There's a skunk outside, a real live skunk. I tell them what was going on outside. It's too cold for them right now. It's 35 degrees. Hi, I love you too. Aren't they cute? It's two girls though. It's a territory. When I say territory battle, look at this. Hold on, look. You think it's just one here? This one's right behind her. Look at this. What are, what are you doing? Hate her face. She's such a spoiled. Hi. Hi from Arizona. Yes. This is my senior. She's 14. She's still in great health. Mommy loves you, bear. Mommy's little ginger bear. She's my chunk monkey. Your mommy's chunky monkey. This is my little pot belly bear. Hey, anyway, she's really, I mean, chihuahuas live a long time. This one is the brat. She's four. And she's jealous of the older one. Stop it. I got to do the two-hand pet. I can't pet one. Look, I can't pet one without the other one. I got to do two hands. Thank you, young Juicy. Where you been? Where have you been? You know, I've had to block a lot of my good followers because they got uh, scammed or, you know, um, hacked. And as soon as I, they send me the Bitcoin um, DM, I block them because I know it's not them with the, the bullshit. So um, it was okay, Willie. It, it was um, good, actually. Um, it was good. It's similar to Philippe's. They did have a few more... Um, dishes they had a i want to say was it mango we didn't try it no we had a um, i posted it we had the lobster noodles in a, a black pepper sauce they were good it was different there was a lot of lobster it was 85 dollars. that was wasn't bad it was enough for two people i know i miss you too it was enough for two people of course the chicken satay it's a must-have did a really good house salad um with like a good ginger vinaigrette. The garlic broccoli. It's similar to um, Philippe's menu. You know. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, this hair is everything. I had my I used to wear my hair like this when I first came to New York. I love my dogs. Why are y'all trying to be camera shy now? You always want attention. Oh, you better stop it. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I didn't do nothing to you. Hey, for Baltimore. What's this on? Stop it. You better stop it, you fucking brat. She's just a demon seed for no reason. Nobody's doing nothing to you. She's just a hate. She got hate in her blood. What is wrong with you? Telling you, man, she's a demon. Stop it. You better be nice to your sibling. Marge is a pretty princess. Get back. Stay up. Putting up a wall. Dividing it. 
It's a wall. I'm putting the Yoda here. You can't go past the Yoda. App, get off the computer. I'm sitting, my phone is sitting on top of my laptop. Look at this. This one is not bothering a soul. My innocent angel. And this one is always trying to mess with us. Stop it now. What's my favorite restaurant in the city? I definitely love Maestro's. Um, depends on what I'm in the mood for. I love Flor de Mayo for regular like Spanish food. And they have a Peruvian menu. It's excellent. Regular neighborhood spot. Um, look, one's here and one's here. They're off camera, but they're trying it. I love you, baby. Nobody's going to ever hurt you. You hear me? Mommy will protect you. Um, you know, I got the cleavage out because, you know, that gets my followers up. Little, little scandal going on. Hey, 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 hey. All right, come on, kids. It's a stare down. They're staring at each other now. Marge, you better show her who's the fucking boss in this house. This is your house. You're the matriarch. You're the queen bee. You are. You're the queen bee. I put coconut oil on them. That's why they look greasy. <laughs> they like to lick it off. Every time I give them a bath, I put the coconut oil on them. But it's good for their skin, especially in the winter with the dry heat. If they get itchy. Hi, aloha. Yes. Yes, young Juicy bought me a badge. Yes, girl. Get that bird seed money going and the squirrel, the squirrel peanuts. Come on, stop. <laughs> I can't get a minute. They got to be up under me. I love you, though. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, so anyway. I look like the, um, with this hair, I look like the mom. The hot mom. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like the hot mom. The fantasy hotness. The cougar. <laughs> yes, young Juicy bought another badge. Yes, spoil me. Yes, give me all the coin. Yeah, they get dry skin in the winter. I spray leave-in conditioner on them too. Like um, the natural kind though. Like the, you know, like the the nice regular oils. Nothing chemically. You know, like chem... chem chemically that's not even what chemically which isn't a word either but nothing with a bunch of chemicals but i'll give them like um the keys i mean so i'm reading this hold on this one's fair. she said a question i need to pick up my stuff from my ex who's a complete narcissist and my keys are still in the house i'm so upset he said i can't have my stuff till the end of next month you don't have anybody else that can go over there and get your stuff should I get a police escort or ignore him to the end of the month? Can you get in when he's at work? Is there a way to get in without a key or like go in the window? I'm saying. If you get mail there, technically you're a resident. It wouldn't be breaking and entering if you're a resident. Like if you can prove that you live there. I'm just saying I would probably go there when he's not there. I would try to get in and get my shit out to avoid him. Or have someone else go over and get it. But then again, you know what they do too? They try to hide a couple things so you have another reason to contact them. Because they'll try to like find any reason to stay in touch. Oh, you left your shoestring here. You should come get your shoestring. <laughs> That's so petty. Uh, I have such stories about these things. Had my ex. He was, oh my God. He, he went back to Brooklyn. This was 20 years ago when I first, yeah, like this was, we were together th three years when I first moved here. I had so many boyfriends. Anyway, um, he kept, he wanted to see me and he didn't have a car and I'm in Westchester and he's in Brooklyn. So he kept saying, I left my CDs there. I need them cause I got to go to the studio. Uh, I need these CDs. I mean, he called me for three days. Yeah, I want to watch Snowfall. Um, I've been watching that Obsessed on Hulu. Yo, can I tell you, Hulu is the shit. I like Hulu. I've been watching a lot of good stuff on Hulu. I got rid of the cable. 
Now I got all the streaming services, and by far, Hulu is the best one, in my opinion. All right, so look. So he kept saying, oh, I need my CDs, I need my CDs. So I said, I don't want to. You said, I have COVID and gave it to my parents. We are, who are pushing 80 because there was a drug dealing and strangers coming in and out of drawing in our bathroom. You got to have somebody that can go over there and get the stuff. Or pff, my ignorant ass, I'd go over there with COVID. I wouldn't give a shit. Fuck him. Oh, well, give me my shit. I tell him, I would tell him to leave it out on the fucking porch. If you don't want to catch COVID. Because I'm cunty like that. Leave my shit outside. Nicely packaged. And I'll be there to pick it up. I'll, I'll call you in five minutes. When I'll be out in front. So nobody steals my stuff. But anyway. So my ex was like. Oh I need my CDs. I need these CDs. It was like 10 CDs he left here. Okay. He wanted to see me. It wasn't about the CDs. And I really didn't want to drive to Brooklyn. Okay, this is before Ubers and all that shit. So reluctantly, I finally, after three days of him hounding me night and day, night and day, to bring these CDs, in between him trying to beg to come back, but I couldn't take him back because I went out of town and he effed another bee in my bed and she stole my Dior Rasta bowling bag with the matching Dior Rasta sneakers that I just got. Not only you fucked a bitch in my house, she stole my Dior purse and matching sneakers I just got before I left town. <laughs> Ain't no coming back from that. None. None. You hear me? None. I didn't talk to him for seven years. We're friends now. And he admitted it. I told him I would never talk to you again until you admit it. He wouldn't admit it back then. He tried to say, oh, you're crazy. Yeah, an $1,800 purse and $700 sneakers at the time just walked out of here on its own. Nothing's ever been missing in my house, right? That Dior roster collection was great, right? Anyway, so you know what I'm talking about, Tommy. Yes, so I drove the CDs in my white, di I had a diamond white, it was called Diamond White, Escalade EXT. All right, I got brand new. I loved it. It was the pickup truck Escalade. I drove to Brooklyn. I had a cell phone. So I called him. He thought he was going to see me and talk to me. <laughs> so I called him from out front. I had my plan already. I had them in a bag. I had them like in a, you know, shop right bag, plastic bag tied up. <laughs> so I said, hey, I'm out front. So he comes out all excited. You know, you could see he wanted to try to talk to me. I had my doors locked. <laughs> I threw the CDs out the window on the ground and took off. <laughs> I said, Urgh! I made sure. I threw them out the window. I just dropped them on the ground Kirk, and took off. You know, he was pissed. I said, He's blowing up my phone. Thank you, Jamal. Blowing up my phone. Come back. I'll buy you whatever you want. Uh, uh, uh. I said, F you. Fuck you. Call the bitch that took my Rasta, my Dior Rasta bag and my Dior sneakers. Call her. That you had at my, my house when I was out of town. Holding shit down, bum. That's why I don't date bums. So. I was younger. Listen, he was in his 20s. He was playing PlayStation and smoking weed with his little friends on the couch all day. Yeah, girl, I'm telling you, young Juicy, that I have another story that with one of those two where with my ex. Anyway, but listen. Oh, then he would get rides up here or he would take his sister's car and I would come home and he'd be outside hiding in the bushes waiting for me and try to try to pin me down. He had me pinned down <laughs> In the whole, no, he's five foot four. Okay. He's five foot four. <laughs> so I, he had me literally jumped from the steps and got on top of me like a midget and had me pinned down. He's like a little pit bull. He was short, but stocky. He's got, love you. Trying to look me in my face. I love you. 
let me come back. I said, I never will ever, ever let you come back. Call the bitch that took my Dior roster bag and sneakers. I kept saying it. So, um, yeah, that was crazy. Bastard. But my, my point is, they will think of any excuse to try to talk to you, to bait you back in to talk to them. So don't be surprised if you go to get your stuff from your ex that a few things are missing that he forgot to pack. No, it wasn't Chink. No, this is way before him. This is 20 years ago. So I don't even know if he's dead or alive, Chink. I don't know. He was on drugs, so who knows? Anyway, so listen. So... Don't be surprised if you try to get your stuff back. They will try to keep stuff. To try to make you come back again. Or try to, you know what I'm saying? You know it. It's a, it's a ploy. So, oh, listen. I'm so good on relationships right now. That I don't want to be bothered. He has the rent paid for, huh? He has the rent paid for a year and kept them around to get their I mean, 700 a month. Dude, when he was at work, I felt like I was going to get raped every time I came home. Beth heads hanging out of the. Oh, my God. You're lucky they didn't steal all your shit. Thank you. Ew. Hi, Jack Thriller. Yes, Jack Thriller. Yes, one of my good friends. What are you doing? Jack left me and moved to Atlanta, y'all. Jack is such a nice person. Jack is a good friend. You guys know him from um, Wildin' Out. Yes, and this is 50. No, that's a different chink. That's chinks. My ex is named Chink. I don't even like to say the name. It's like, ugh. Ugh, disgust. No, he didn't pass. Chink's drugs rest his soul. I only met him like twice out at clubs. He was a good looking guy. Very nice, very friendly guy. I didn't know him like that. But my ex was named Chink Santana. Totally different people. But my ex, ugh. Ugh, God. I get disgusted when I think about certain guys I've dated. Do y'all get sick thinking about different people you used to mess with like what the hell was wrong with me what was I thinking at that time what was really going on that I was like even like considered that attractive and I'm not just talking looks (sighs) I don't want to be bothered right now like I don't want to be bothered with no relationships no serious nothing okay I was out in the city tonight whole bunch Of guys I never saw before. Okay. Now remember. I ain't been out the house in three years. I've been out. But not out out. Now I'm going to be out out. On a regular basis. I don't mind going on dates. But if I don't like the guy. I'm not going to go out and eat with you. I can pay for my own meal. Like tonight. Me, Jatan and Dawn went to dinner. Okay. We don't need men to pay for our food. But I'd rather sit with my girlfriends or sit by myself than to have some dude irritating my soul for food. I will get up and walk the fuck out. You're not going to get on my nerves and think you're going to talk about SEX and all this raunchy shit because you're buying me a steak. I don't even eat steaks. Uh, Let's say crab legs, my favorite. You ain't going to disrespect me for crab legs. Okay? Okay. Maybe crab legs and lobster. No, I'm kidding. I'm just stupid. I'm joking. But you get my point. But I know chicks that'll just go out um, for food. And I'm going to tell you what that is. That's a bum bitch. You going out just to get meals? You low level, honey. I'm sorry. You low level on the chain. You definitely low level. And I say the same thing. About bitches that be effing for bags and shoes. Step it up. Step it up. What is wrong with you? Fucking for some red bottoms. (laughs) Have some self-respect. Fucking red bottoms. 
I don't want to be bothered with this stalker shit. And the more I watch these shows on Hulu, this you got to watch this Obsessed. These are real live victims of stalkers who live to tell what happened. Most of their stalkers committed suicide in front of them or killed someone else or whatever. Like These are like, one, one was with a serial killer. She wasn't even with him. He was a customer um, at a gas station. And her beeper number was up on the wall. So he kept paging her and you could talk to the people. You got to watch these things. But this type of shit will make you not want to ever meet anybody because it makes you realize how sick and deranged some people are. And it's men and women. The one woman had her neighbor. It was a woman stalking her. So. um, Yeah, but it's so disgusting out here that some guys, they just want to go out to dinner because they think they're going to get the buns for some food. I'm good. I'm good on that. I'm good on that. That's why if I do go out with somebody and I'm not sure maybe I may like them or not. Because for me, it's personality. It's got a click personality. I don't care about looks. I really don't. I'm not a really a looks person. I'm more mental. But that's why I don't, I don't want a guy to take me to a super expensive restaurant on the first date. Because if I don't like you and I decide to leave... It's no big, no big deal. He ain't going to go crazy or act funny. Like, cause some dudes really get upset about their money. Then I'm like, ooh, double ooh. Like, so we can go somewhere regular for the first date. Okay. Because I don't expect you to spend five, $600 on me. Cause then you're going to be expecting something nine times out of 10. Unless it's a guy that has a lot of money and that's just nothing for him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, ladies, I suggest when you do go out on a date, go somewhere regular where the tab's less than $100. So he can't say, oh, I spent all this money on you and you, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you this and that, you owe me this or ah, uh, ah, uh. no. Because they could be super petty. I'm not doing the petty shit. So I'd rather just not even go on the date. I'd rather just talk to you on the phone one or two good times. You like the Finding Chrissy? Thank you, Brandy. I'm doing season two soon. So, what's I going to say? Oh, I'd rather just not even go on a date. I'll talk to you on the phone. And I got another, I got two, three phones. I'll talk to you on my other phone. You ain't get my real number. All right. And see if I like you or not. Enough to even go out with you. Go out with you. Oh, God. And then what if their breath stinks? I can't. So it is what it is. Um, it's just too, I'm busy. Like I'm busy. Like I got shit to do. So it's like for me to go out with a guy and get dressed up and do all this. Put on an outfit and all that. Down to his place, he put a. Oh my god, Steno Star. Oh my god, I believe you. There's some sick people out here, and definitely please be careful. Do not let them. Hi, Friday. What's going on? We got to, I got to hit you up about crypto because that's my crypto, one of my crypto buddies. We always talk about crypto. Like, I got my crypto friends. Like, we, we're crypto nerds. That's one of my... But I've known him for 20 years. But anyway. Um, yeah, so... Uh, no, I'm not into baseball. I did go to an Orioles game once. I got free tickets. I ate some nachos and drank a beer. And I left. It was too hot. That's when Camden Yards first opened. You know, I'm from Baltimore. So, you know, I was there when they were building Camden Yards. Isn't that crazy? What if you take her out and she doesn't dress up? She would dress down. I mean, it depends on where you guys decide you're going and where, what city you're in. Like, if you're in, like, Arkansas or Alabama, most people that, you know, I've traveled, they don't dress up, dress up like they do New York. Or, like, I've been to Milan 
and like, honey, bow, everybody's bow main down, like, Hulk couture. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm walking in with a Zara dress on. Like, I'm doing something, bitch. I look like the bum. I'm like, they're like, get this vagrant bitch out of here. Like, hello. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not wealthy enough. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. But, no, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, if they dress down, down, like, sweats and sneakers, nah. You don't want to even deal with that. Because that, that means, like, she ain't even given the proper consideration to try to present herself you know, to even maybe be desirable or attractive. You know, for me, dating is possibly mating, like dating to, you know what I'm saying, to to date and, and possibly have a connection romantically. So why would you want to go out and not dress up or at least look decent and put a little bit of mascara, lip gloss? You don't got to OD. Put on some nice jeans and a nice top and some shoes, Right? But I know chicks that'll go out with just like a bump. Like, it's true. Like, you're not going to attract a high quality man if you're not taking care of yourself. Save that shit for laying around the house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even when I lay around the house, I still look desirable. Hello. Because I'm sure a few of my exes will be watching me from fake pages. A few of my stalkers all got fake pages. I've caught a few of them and they're blocked, but they always just make more. I hate when people are so stupid, they just say, oh, just block them. Oh, like Instagram will never let you make 10 more pages. <sighs> I can't. I remember when I went, when I went, thank you, Obstacles with Bliss. This is the Barbie thing. When I went for the stalker from Dr. Phil show and I went for the first time to the police station. This is how ignorant they are. Just block her. Hi, Russian queen. They said, just block her. Ooh, officers. You're a genius. They got like, this must be a fucking, uh, you guys must do brainstorming sessions every day in the back. Just block her. <laughs> wow, like she can't make another email address. She can't make another fake account to stalk me. Thanks, officers. You guys are genius. I never thought of that. Like I hadn't blocked already a hundred fake pages from this chick. So. Yeah, I'm tired. I had one glass of red wine tonight. Stalkers are disgusting, no life, like, ooh, must be doing something right. You know what, though? I've been stalked and harassed so much. It's not even funny. It's not, it's, it's scary. It makes you not want to ever go out and date anyone. It makes you not want to even talk to anyone. It's scary. I'm not going to lie. It's really bad. Um, because you really never know what somebody's really thinking about in the back of their mind or who they really are. I mean, do we ever really know anyone ever in life? You never know. Like, look at all these things. These men have whole families living double lives. Sometimes I watch a lot of this stuff. Do we ever really know anyone else? Do we? Do we ever know ourselves? I'm not trying to get too deep. I'm constantly learning new things about myself all the time. Things I need to work on. Things that, you know, personality traits. And, and i also been lately just cutting people off. I can't. But you know what's scary? Cutting them off. Because then they flip out. You realize somebody... Thank you, Russian queen. I love the only one Russian queen. Let me tell you something. I stopped talking to a girl today. I don't even want to talk about it too much because she might be on here watching. But I'm not with the games and the bullshit. She called me to start arguing. She started texting me to start arguing about a bunch of fucking nothing. I'm busy filling my serving looks orders and doing shit. 
I don't got time. I don't go back and forth with the, well, so do you. So do I. Yes, you did. No, you didn't. Girl. I don't do that. So I nipped it right in the bud. And I told her, bitch, bye. Bye. You blocked. And I've known you for over five, six years. Because why? You wanted to start with the negativity, the drama, and the, the bullshit. And I cut her loose. She's blocked off of high 16 or better. Yes. Do you want to go live with me? Let me know if you want to go live. Um, that's what I'm saying when you get to know yourself. 20 years ago, the Chrissy would have probably participated in that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But I don't got the time, man. Like, my life is good. I'm happy. I'm, I'm pro my life is prospering financially. Everything is going great in my life. Why would you hit me because you're bored and just start try to start an argument through text messaging? But see, I recognize it now. You understand? That once they start it, then I'm like, mm-mm. Once they start it, nope. I tell them straight up, I don't do this back and forth shit, girlfriend. You're blocked. You tried it. Because, listen, a lot of times people will try to just come at you. <clears throat> then it was, oh, uh, she tried to get into, you need to learn how to talk to people respectfully. She said, no, this sh bitch, don't, don't do that respectfully shit to me. Because a lot of that shit is disrespect. <clears throat> so, I told her, honey, I, I have cut people off for a lot less than what you're doing right now. Watch your next, you know, watch your next paragraph here. She wanted to keep going. I said, girl, bye. That's a wrap. It's a fucking wrap. So, I don't feel no, I miss her daughter. Her daughter's adorable. But that's it. Life is too short. I almost died. What? A year and a half ago? It's been about a year and a half. You think I got time to waste to argue with bitches? I'm gonna argue with a bitch over what? She tried, it was about it was about a BBO. <laughs> so stupid. I don't even want to get into it. So but once you're gone, you can't come back. Cause once they do it once, they will do it again. I learned this. You you can't feel sorry for people. You cannot give them a second chance. Because they're going to do it again. I promise you. They will do it again. That's it. But So now what I may, mean to say is. Do we ever know ourselves? No. Life is a learning process. But I, lo I know more about myself now than I did 5 or 10 years ago. Because I've taken the time to really sit and analyze shit. You know what I'm saying? So. You said she know what she be doing. So. Yeah. No big loss there. You're welcome. Listen, obstacles with bliss. You got to fight fire with fire. You can't be soft with these motherfuckers. Trust me. They will take full advantage. You can't be nice. These, It's like... And I, I'm a nice person. But being nice... These guys try to really take advantage. And I gotta be the bitch... And the nasty person. And then the... Oh, it's your negative. You have not... No, because you brought it out of me. Because now I see that you don't respect the nice. That you want to you wanna think like you, you're going to come up off of me. It's disgusting. I can't even. Ugh. Once I have a conversation with you and see where your head is really at. There won't be a second conversation. That's why I said I don't even they don't even make it to a date. If the conversation's shitty on the phone or I see how you think mentally about. Ugh, Like the, uh, there a lot of them are opportunists. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I date younger men. We all know this. Hello. But a lot of these younger men, they think that they, they all hot. They all think they hotter than the last one. They, if they only knew how many hot guys try to talk to me. So it's so funny to hear them try to like, you know, sell, basically sell themselves to me and, and tell me all their good qualities and oh how great, how great they are and what they going to do different for me and this and that. But then they always want to throw in the let's build. I want a, I want a woman I could build with. No, you want an older woman who has money to help you progress financially. Let's be a hundred. That's what that building bullshit means. So they can keep it. So that's what I want to say is, um, I don't mind dating guys closer to my age now because they're more financially secure. What's the right way for men to get out of the streets? So many addicted to fast money have to start with consistent money. Well, I have a lot of friends that got out of the streets successfully and they did it through real estate. Okay. Um, buying properties, flipping properties, um, laundromats, car washes. Um, I have dated some older guys, but you know, with that too, a lot of that comes baggage. They're bitter about child support. Their ex fucked their cousin or their best friend left them for the best friend or they're a gold digger. They're taking all their money. They got to keep the house. You got to sit and hear the stories. Of the, you know, the scorned older man and why they don't trust women and they're cheap because his ex-wife took him to the cleaners. Oh, I've heard it all. I've heard it all. So it's like, do I want the young, hot, big D, broke guy? Or do I want the financially stable older man who's boring, who probably has to take a Viagra? And it's still not even great. He's just laying on top of you with the stomach and he's sweaty. <sighs> Which one? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Young or old just to be with someone who appreciates Chrissy. Yeah, so that's all it is. Listen, what's meant for me is not going to miss. I'm not looking. What's meant for me is going to be what's for me. What should I do if I'm feeling unloved in my marriage? Depends on the situation. If he's a good guy. And he's a good father. If you have kids. I, that's, that's a very general question. But if he's a good guy and he's not abusive. If he's not cheating. If he's a good father and a good provider. I would try to work it out. Because honey there ain't shit out here. When I tell you. Yes, girl. I started following. Yes, Fresh and Green. I started following those data inmate pages on Facebook just because I watched Love After Lockup. I would never date another inmate ever again. I've been there, done that. I've been on plenty, plenty of jail visits and gotten my share of <laughs> letters. <laughs> it looked like a two year old wrote them. But that's another story. Um, I used to date. You know, I didn't care for guys. I was thugged out in jail and all that. You know what I'm saying? But now it's just like, no, I'm good. You said some, I uh, uh, want to just beat that and dip. Yeah, and I, sometimes I just want to beat that and dip too. Goes both ways. It's double standard. Why does it have to be like the guy hit and split? Well, sometimes the woman wants to hit and split too. Because he has nothing else to offer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love the love during uh, lockup. I love all that. Um Sometimes that's all they got going on. They a tool. I call them a tool because it's all they got. That's it. So, you know. Like, you know, we all have needs. We're all humans. So. Women hold out more. Yeah, because genetically we're programmed to... You guys get that test that testosterone build up. You get the blue balls. So we don't like we can definitely hold out a lot longer. Hello. 
Y'all got to have it. Y'all will stick your, you know what, in pretty much anything. Not everybody, but a lot of guys will. That's why you ever see, like, sometimes a guy will cheat and you see the chick. Like, he cheated and, like, it's not even the fact that you cheated. It's what the fuck did you cheat with? Like, you got me and you cheating with a crackhead. My my friend Natasha, God rest her soul, was so in love with this guy. He was a big time drug dealer in Baltimore. And he took good care of her. She's a beautiful girl. She was half Danish, half black. She spoke Danish, all that shit. Like, we were friends since I was 12 and she was 11. We met at Skateland, roller skating. And we grew up together. She moved to New York before I did. Um, and we remained friends throughout our whole life. Like, kind of like that movie, Beaches. But anyway, she had a son. Anyway, long story short, um, her ex, the drug dealer, cheated with a crackhead. One of his customers. One of his customers. Toothless ass, straight up, walking the streets, crackhead, like, he fucked her. And I had the nerve to tell my friend who's beautiful. Natasha was beautiful. She she was on the cover of Latina magazine. Even though she wasn't a Latina. She looked Latina. Gorgeous girl. I'm talking beautiful. Natasha was beautiful. Very feminine. Natasha was always classy. Her man fucked one of his customers who was a straight fiend. And she was devastated. She never got over it. Because it wasn't even the fact like you cheated. You cheated with a fucking customer? Why? Just why? You got a gorgeous woman. Like, I'll never understand it. I'll just never understand it. And I'll never try to wreck my brain. It's been going on since we were but we were ever born. Like, the dawn of time. You know what I'm saying? I watched Versailles. Did you guys watch that? Ever watch that series Versailles? With the Palace of Versailles? Ugh. He was he had a whole bunch of concubines. He had the pregnant wife. Um just you know, men are as faithful as their options. What's this say? Hold on. If your shorty offers you her friend because she has time of the month. Does it mean she plays me with someone else? What? Hold on. You said if your shorty offers you her friend because she has time of the month. Does it mean she plays me with someone else? What kind of situation you got? That's it. J. J Max Love. I'm telling you, that's it. Get this money. That's it. I never met a dollar I haven't liked, honey. Trust me. Um, but he was a scumbag. Like these men from throughout history notoriously have been like just ugh. So listen, you've said your your girl offered you to have sex with her friend because she had her period? And you did you do it? Come on, I need more details. Come back up on this thing. Tell me more. Wrong. Men are faithful because the appropriate what they have. Sorry, Bill, I don't understand you. Um Yeah, but her mouth no mind, let me stop. Don't don't let me get nasty on here. Her mouth ain't on her period. Why would she want to offer you her friend? That sounds sus. That's some sister wife shit. Thank you. I I wish I would get my time of the month and say, hey, baby, why don't you go have sex with my bestie? (laughs) Can you imagine? You gotta be what? What? I I wish I would. And I wish a bitch would even want to. 
do that with my man. I wish, I wish a bitch would say, yeah, I'll fuck your man. That's what this guy asked. Did you see the guy ask the question? Is he still on here? He said, if my girl got her period and offered me her best friend to have sex with her, does that mean she's going to play me now? He ain't even worried about fucking her friend. He's worried now she going to go out and fuck somebody else because he fucked her friend. That's all he's worried about. That's all he's worried about because he probably did it and now he's worried about the repercussions. I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. He just asked that. He, was, he asked it right there publicly. I can't make that shit up. I wish a, I wish I would even test a bitch and say, my man wants to have sex with you, girl. Would you do that for me as a favor? And she'd be like, okay. I'd be like, get out of my house. Get the fuck out I would throw her Ooh, she'd have her period all over her face and all over she'd be bleeding out of every goddamn place if she'd be like okay I do need to get I do have a YouTube I need to really get on there more I really do right so Maybe I'll start saving these videos and put them on YouTube. I do have the podcast starting after. I don't even want to say what I'm about to do. I'll talk to you. You guys will see it after. I don't want to make any premature announcements. No woman would look at me if you were mine. Why would need more real talk? Listen, let me tell you something. A lot of women only want certain men. Like if you're a good looking woman, and this has been my experience. Some guys, you making them hot by being with them. You know what I'm saying? How do I feel about polygamy? Relationship? I mean, it's not for everyone. I'm Listen, to each his own. As long as you're not hurting anyone, I don't give a shit what anybody does. Whatever floats your boat, I don't care. For me, I'm too jealous. I'm too jealous. I will run every other bitch out that house. I can't do it. Hi, Angelina. Dead ass. It's not for me, but it works for some people. They're into it. I'm not. I'm not one of those people. What's mine is mine. That's it. If it's my man, it's my man. Not me, hers, and hers, and hers. And let's go out looking for a fifth wife and all that. I'm good. Exactly. Facts. Ugly men, all of a sudden, the man when you made him. And that's happened a few times in my life because I used to tell them, don't get it twisted. Nobody was looking at your ass before you first started fucking with me. Don't start feeling yourself. Okay? I made you, motherfucker. <laughs> so, it's so funny, though, because bitches will try to fuck your man thinking that they're going to cheat. Or, or they're going to get treated the way that the guy, you know, they see, it's not even the man they want. It's the way they see the man treating you. They're like, oh God, they're so happy. I want that happiness for me. I want that man to buy me gifts like he's buying for Chrissy. So she played me. Hold on. Here he goes. Here he goes. This guy's back. The New York one. Can you come on live, dude? And ask me these questions. I want to hear. I just asked him to go live. I don't know who this is, but I want to hear this story. If he can come on live. I just requested him to come on the live. Let's see this story. He declined. He declined. I needed to hear the story. This was the one with the period and the friend story. This is interesting because I've never been asked this. Not live. Okay. She must be there. But you think, okay. You you think she cheated on you because did you have sex with her friend when she was on her period? Raj. I'm sorry, it's Raj. It just makes me like that's ill. Did you do it? Is the question. You didn't say if you did it or not. I guess she did. I guess he did. Now he's worried if she played him and cheated. You can't be mad if she does. Thank you. You love the bangs. Thank you. 
You can't be mad even if she did. You left that door open. If you had sex with her friend, you left that door wide open. Or should I say the P wide open? <laughs> Hi, Lucky Church. So I, I'm dying to hear the rest of the story. Your friend, your girlfriend offered you her friend. Okay, no, because she would be jealous if I did. But she offered you her friend. Oh, that was a setup. She just wanted to see what you would say. So he didn't have sex with the friend. He didn't have sex with the friend. But obviously, if she offered it, she wanted to see what he was going to say. I hope you didn't fall for that and say, okay. Thank you. This is a yeah, blue um, eyeliner I did tonight. I did it myself. I had the matching earrings on. Let me, where did I put the earrings I have on tonight? Oh, here. So I had these on with my outfit tonight when I went out to the restaurant. These are cool. This girl in um, Detroit makes me all this um, custom stuff. These are made out of leather and t-shirts. It's called Dahlia's, Dahlia's Baby Doll Denims. She kept implying it. I kept saying, no, smart man, don't ever in your life. Let me tell you all, guys, some shit. Don't ever admit you cheated. Take it to the grave. Don't ever feel guilty and tell a woman you cheated. She'll never get over it. She's going to rub it in your face the rest of your life. You're never going to, you're never going to get over it. Trust me. Don't ever admit it. And this is coming from a woman. These are cute, right? So I had these on and I'm walking through the restaurant like, hey. <laughs> So yeah, I had these on tonight with the the whole look. I'm gonna post the picture later. The, the, I had these on earlier. So anyway, these earrings. These are from Dahlia's Baby Doll Denim. Serving looks, yes. Um, so this is my advice to you guys. Don't ever admit it. Wasn't you. Somebody says they saw you. Wasn't me. Must have been somebody that looked like me. Wasn't me. Because guess what? Thoughts on going through a man's phone. I have to. I've done it. And I've made a fool of myself sometimes. Because it's like a relative. Or like a co-worker. Like just nobody. What is she doing that for a reason to play me? No, she ain't doing it. She's trying to see if you would fuck her friend. And, and see if she could trust you. You're thinking about it all wrong, dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're thinking about it all wrong. Your woman is in love with you and wants to see if you would cheat on her with her friend. So you were right to tell her no. And don't cheat on her. If you have a good woman, don't fucking cheat. There's nothing out here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And it's nasty out here. These people are fucking crazy. Yeah, I got these on tonight. They got the boobs out because... I do get a lot. Like, sometimes I'll get an extra thousand followers when I get off live. I can't make this up. I'm just sitting here on my, uh, like a tank top and a bra. And I don't give a shit. So anyway. Um, so I was going to say, and ladies too, don't ever admit it. You don't want to hurt them. Number one. You made a mistake. You cheated. Why make it worse? By letting them find out or telling them. Yeah, you may think, oh, I'm clearing my conscience. I love her so much. She needs to know I was wrong and I won't do it again. Trust me. Make sure she don't find out you ever did it in the first place and then don't do it again. Because she's never going to get over it. Anytime a guy cheated on me, it was always in the back of my head. I couldn't even have sex with him because I'd be thinking, well, did he do this to her too? Then you got all the questions. Did you eat her? Did she suck your dick? Did you use a condom? All those questions, man, it's just stress and drama. You don't want. Take it to the grave. Russian queen, as far as looking through the phone, I know it's hard. I'd be glimpsing. Even if it's a guy I'm just casually dating, I'd still be like trying to see who's texting them. It's cur I mean, it's natural. Um, but... This is why 
answer this why cheat that's like po and rich the disrespect that that it's shit. exactly stay single that's why i say why do a lot of these nba players get married they don't have to they can stay single the rest of their life and fuck bad bitches forever they don't have to marry anyone you think a chick's going to say, I'm leaving you and your mansion and everything you do for me because you're not going to marry me and I'm going to go back to work at Arby's where you met me behind the counter because you don't want to marry me. And I'm going to let another bitch just like me move into this big mansion and drive the Rolls Royce because you won't marry me. Yeah, right. Nobody's leaving that. Okay. So unless she's from a wealthy family and she don't really give a shit about the money, but nine times out of 10, that's not the case. So my point is a lot of these wealthy men never marry and they don't have to get married. The smart ones don't because why go through that messy divorce? Look at the Kim and Kanye right now. Hold on. Here's the next question. I know I keep asking, but want to know your thoughts. If you have a man and he goes to the strip club without you and his boys, not okay, I think. I'm going to answer that in a minute because I used to be a dancer. You're better off letting your man go to the strip club than a regular bar. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Let me, fin let, me let me finish this. My point is, why get married? Go through the messy divorce. She gets half. could just stay single you could just stay single but i know for a fact a lot of the the um nba they want you to have wives they have the wives association and all that but it's not mandatory that you get married to be in the fucking nba or nfl yes they prefer it because of the image but come on these men are notorious whores man whores they're they're known for groupies and <laughs> it's a given and a lot of these women want to blindly walk into it like, oh, I'm not a gold digger. I love, I love him and his $65 million contract. I don't want his money. Girl, if his tall ass was sleep, sweeping the floor at a truck stop, you wouldn't look at him twice. Please, spare me, bitch. You want the gold. We all do. We all want the money. I don't know any woman that wants a broke man. I've never met one yet in my fucking life that says I'm out here looking for a man with no money. Girl, where's the broke club at? Where's the club with all the broke guys that don't got no money yet? Let's go there tonight. Where's that at? I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> so y'all can front and say, oh, I just, I like them for them. And, you know, I'm all about love. Money isn't everything, girl. Money is everything. <laughs> try not having any. Try, try loving when your lights are off. Try loving when there's no food in the refrigerator. Okay? I love him. Yeah, you can love him, but y'all got to both have your shit together. Okay? Finance, with, romance without finance is a nuisance, right? Y'all at least both got to have a job. Do something. So they can lie and say, oh, I love him for him. He just happens to be a multi-billionaire. <laughs> girl bye <laughs> so okay no money gets old okay so only one Russian queen who's one of my hi Jay Matthew my good friend in real life okay hi Hattie Rex New York how you doing my rapper friend from the Bronx in real life so listen so only one Russian queen asked me a question and she is one of my favorite followers so she said, what if your man goes to the strip club without you or his boys? It's nothing to worry about. I'm going to tell you why. Strippers don't want your man. They want your man's money. They're not, they're not even looking at him. I danced for, what, 15 years? I worked in strip clubs since I was 16, 17. I started working in the strip club as a minor. Trust me. They're all the same face. The only ones you remember, the only customers you remember, I'm going to tell you this straight up, from my real life experience, are the ones that don't spend any money and the ones that spend a lot of money. Anybody in between? Mediocre. 
you either going to ignore the ones that come in there and sit there and don't spend money. They don't get dances. They don't tip. They sit and drink all night at the bar. No girls, they avoid him. They like, he's like, he might as well not even be in a club. He gets no conversation unless a new girl comes in that doesn't know he's broke and doesn't spend. But the other girls will say, don't go up to him. He don't spend. It's like a secret code. Like it's just, you, you warn the new girl, like don't even waste your time going over there. All right. Or you remember the big spenders. Okay. Like I worked in Atlanta when BMF would come in with duffel bags of money. Okay. You remember the big spenders, but you get the other, you get the regular big spenders too. I had regular guys that would come in and spend three, $4,000, like nothing every few months. But as soon as you see them walk in that door, you, your eyes light up. Cause you remember, you remember, okay, that's this, that's John from, from wherever. And he's back in town. You run over, like you just, oh. So glad to see you. How you been? Yes. So my whole thing is this. If your man is going to the strip club, I wouldn't worry about it. Unless they're doing extras in the strip club. It depends if it's a dirty club. There's dirty clubs and there's clean clubs. If your man's in the back room now doing some, uh, 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 that's questionable. But even then, so what? It's just him getting his thing off. Men don't get emotionally connected like we do. You know what I'm saying? They can have sex and just, uh, uh, uh. We don't really understand that as women because we're programmed genetically different where we get all emotional and we get attached to the man. It's just the way God made us. Men can psh, 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 and be gone. They don't even care. Like it's, like, it's like a sport for them. So my thing is this. I dance to 100%. Some of these strippers will bang the customers though. Yeah, of course. So the thing is, my my point is you're better off your man going to a strip club and not leaving with one of these women because he's no he'd have to pay them or whatever. Like it's about the money. It's transactional. These men that go to the strip club, they know these women don't want them. It's about entertainment and they're there to make a living and it's 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 a job for them. Now if your man goes out to regular clubs all the time and hooks up with Rhonda or Susan who never gets out anywhere or she just broke up with her man and she's going to show him she's going to get even because he cheated on her with her best friend Donna she's going to show him she still got it and she's still hot and she's going to go who's that hot guy that's Russian Queen's man but so what I don't care I'm hot too let me see if he'll go home with me tonight. Because I haven't had any in a while. My man cheated on me and I was punishing him by not giving him any anymore. That is not punishment, women. He's just going to go out and fuck somebody else. You think holding back the pee is really a punishment? Unless he really can't get it anywhere. But that's hard because they can go to any uh, 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 rub and tug or whatever and find some pee. It's not hard to find, okay? But my point is, I would rather my man go to a strip club and come home. Okay, so what? He had a couple drinks. He tips some bitches, got a couple lap dances. He comes home. Then him hooking up with Rhonda, who's hot in the twat, okay? Looking for anybody to have a, a, a weekend in the cheap motel with or the night and then they lie and say, oh, I got drunk and spent the night at my boy's house. But they were really in the cheap motel, the short stay with Rhonda, who just broke up with her man at the regular club, the sports bar in your neighborhood, because she's out looking for love and affection and some, some comfort of the D. The strippers aren't looking for that. The strippers aren't looking for none of that. They're looking for as much, how much can I get and go home? I want all the money I can and go home to my boyfriend because a lot of strippers have boyfriends at home waiting. They're not trying to be with your man. So, and I'd rather a man, if a man's even going to cheat, do it and make sure I don't find out. Do it on a business trip. Do it on a business trip. Don't ever see the bitch again. I better not find out about the bitch. Call an escort. Do what you got to do. 
don't have me out here looking crazy, than to fall in love with his secretary. Uh, let me tell you something, an emotional affair to me would be worse than having, having sex with a bitch. Because why? They're emotionally connected. They got a bond and they're laughing with each other and they out having activities together. They're having a full on affair. And you're home like, like cheaters. You see the ever watch cheaters when they be out at the, at the bowling alley and they'll be like, here's the night you called. Listen to what he said. You'd be like, hi, hi, Mike. When are you coming home? I just cooked dinner. Mike will be like, oh, hey, I'm sorry, babe. I got to work late tonight. I'm sorry. Right? But he's really with the chick at the bowling alley. And they're having a great time. He's smacking her on the ass. And they're having the best time ever because, like, this is some new pussy. He's she out cheating. She's exciting. She's not the nagging bitch calling and saying, when are you coming home? The salmon's getting cold. Hurry up, Mike, and pick up some, pick up my lottery tickets and my new ports. Don't forget. No, he's out bowling with his new bitch. Now here comes the cheater cameras. And they come out and they're getting in the car. And then it's like, oh my God, I knew it. I knew it. So it's like, okay, I'd rather, like I said, go on a business trip, do your little dirt, send the bitch off, never see her again, than do you be out bowling and having a whole emotional connection and fun times and experiences and activities with a bitch. I'm just saying, that would hurt me worse. That cheaters type shit. You could see the pain. It hurts me to watch that show because I've been there. I've been the cheater and I've been the cheated on. I've been cheated on. I'm, I'm a human and I've been a cheater. I've been on both sides and either way, it didn't feel good. So I'm not proud of it. You said if she's high maintenance like Gucci, Hermes, and hold on. You said if she is, hey, Jesto Frost, if she's high maintenance like Gucci, Hermes, is that a red flag? Should I stay away from her? If you ain't got the coins unsold, if you ain't got the kind of money to, to maintain that, then yeah, if you can't afford it, listen, date on your level. That's a problem. A lot of people don't date on their level. You understand? A lot of us are still dating beneath our level. We've already moved past 10 years ago. And then some of us are dating too high because of the fantasy and the image that they portray, which a lot of times isn't real. And if she don't already have all those things herself, then she's a fraud. You know what I'm saying? Like if she's just looking for the first time for you to buy her a Birkin bag and she don't have 10 of them already, girl by. She, she needs to get out of the delusion. Um, yeah, I wouldn't high hope. Um, you got to be careful. If a woman starts asking you for expensive things too early and all that, hello, red flag. She's trying to use you because I've been the user. <laughs> but it's always guys. Listen, I've dated married men with money. Hello. I've had sugar daddies. I'm not going to lie. Hello. I don't give a shit. Of course, they're going to buy me what the fuck I want because I'm keeping our little secret. And if, if I don't want to be with homeboy, he's going to be with the next bitch that's going to keep the secret because he can afford to have a side bitch. Side bitches are expensive. Okay. That's why I don't understand how these high Johnny, these broke motherfuckers think they such players with a bunch of bitches. You can't afford a bunch of bitches. You can't even afford the one bitch you got at home. You out here just playing, playing broke player all of, like how? How? That's a, that's a rich man's sport. Cheating, 
And having a mistress is a rich man's sport. I'm sorry. That's a rich man's game. Because you're not even paying for the side pussy. You're paying for the bitch to keep her mouth closed and not fuck up your happy home or unhappy home or home, period. Because it's cheaper to keep her nine times out of ten, especially if you are a wealthy man. You got a mortgage. You got your kids in college. You're doing this. You ain't trying to upset the apple cart with no side chick, but you still have needs. She's attractive. You're not out here embarrassing your wife. You're not putting her on front street. You have your little secret ah, 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 meetups or whatever. You buy her the bag she wants. You, you know, give her pay, make sure her bills are good or whatever. She's happy. You're happy. And a smart woman is going to keep her mouth shut. Because why would you want to fuck up that arrangement if a guy is paying your bills, buying you the things you ask for? Okay, he's married. You knew that when you met him. You accepted that. Happens every day. But that's, a, that's an arrangement. They're not cheating on a challenge they can't get back. True, which is good. You should always, you know, it's a good point. Some of them will test the waters, though, with the challenge they can't get back. Because a lot of them, a lot of men feel invincible. Like they can have any woman, especially if they have money and they're, they're narcissists and their egos are bigger than the whole world. It's just some men never, some men will never be with one person. You have, you never accepted it or, hold on. You never accepted it or you would have stayed in it. What do you mean? I was never married. I've been engaged four times. Thank God. I thank God every day I never married any of them because I would have been divorced four times. Let's be real. So many men have money and are cheap though. Oh God, cheap minded. That's the worst. That's the worst. That's the worst. Cheap, a, a man with money who's cheap is low class to me. Like, what are you doing making all this money? What are you, what are you making it for? You can't take it to the grave. You want to leave it to your ungrateful kids who are going to grow up and probably blow it on dumb shit in a trust fund. I've seen that a few times. I had friends that grew up and they had trust funds. And they blew through that shit with cocaine. And they blew through it buying uh, cars. That shit was gone in a year. Then they were right back to fucking being broke when they turned 18. And their parents worked their whole life to give, give them this and they blow through it. Where, what do you, where are you taking the money? If you're not spending it, enjoying it and making sure the woman that you claim you're attracted to and you're having sex with, if you're not putting a smile on her face, then what good is the money for? You have all that money, but what your chick is miserable. Your woman is miserable. She's doing without, but you have the means to give it to her. I have no respect for a man like that. You shouldn't be dating. You should be home hoarding your money. Just go home and count your money all night. And that's it. Go, 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 just jerk off all over the money. Just put it in a big pile. What's it good for if you're not enjoying it? You're not going on. You're not going on a nice trip with your girlfriend or your wife. You know what I'm saying? You're going to deny them because so many men have this complex too of they're being used. That's the funny shit. And a lot of these guys ain't got nothing to use. You making 45,000 a year, but I'm using you. Using you for what? You barely got nothing. You got $20 left over at the end of the week after you pay all your bills, dude. What the fuck am I getting? I'm using you for $20. It's fucking stupid. Oh, I'm not a simp. I'm not a trick. You can't afford to be one. You wish you could. You, you can't even be called that because you ain't even got the money to be that. You said men with money tend to want women with money. It's not wrong. I agree. That's why mar money marries money. You think Jay-Z and Beyonce are together by accident? Hello? They're never going to get a divorce. Believe that. <laughs> that will never happen.
they're locked in. That's a lot of money right there. But they both have their own identities. I don't even want to say it's a man with money wants a woman with money. I say a woman that has her own interests, her own identity, her own hobbies, education that would be good to raise their children. Um, a classy woman, you know, your woman is a reflection of you. She doesn't necessarily have to have money because if he has money, she's good, but she has to have the qualities. She has to have the qualities to be a wife and to represent him in the proper light. You know what I'm saying? And to be a good mother and be able to take over if something happened to him and hold shit down as well. Men raise queens. There are so many broken homes. Yes, I had that conversation uh, yesterday with someone. A lot of men just have never had the example of a good woman because a lot of them grew up with a mother who raised them, a single mother, and they were never shown their mother getting flowers. Their mother never received flowers from a man or was never picked up and taken on a nice date. They never saw that. Um a lot of times. So where did these young men learn how to treat a, a lady? A lot of them don't. And a lot of them see these scumbags in the neighborhood who are abusive and, and woman beaters and, and just disrespectful. And that's what they learned growing up because they just got the dudes in the neighborhood teaching them this shit. There might be like an OG here and there that comes all around and say, son, you know, treat her like a lady and this and that. But come on, that's very rare. So, you know, it's hard if you've never seen your mother being treated like a queen by a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, how do you know what to do with a woman? And you're talking to some older dudes, but you don't know what that older dude is about and that older dudes are doing to their girlfriends. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them hate their mothers. It's some kind of issues they got. That's a whole nother. You know, I have a domestic violence nonprofit I've had for five years, Survive to Thrive Global. That's the name of the page. Also, the website is there in my link. Um, a lot of them hate their mothers. So they take it out on you. It's so multifaceted. Yeah. It's every situation is different. We don't know what demons some people have in them, men and women. That's why I say, ladies, especially be careful. Don't let just anybody pick you up and take you on a date. You don't know who these people are. It's real out here. There are men that hate women. My ex that almost killed me hated me. He hated me. He spit in my face. He told me he hates females. He, he told me I hate females. I believed him. And after I got out of the situation, I got a four year, five year order of protection. I pressed charges. He's still out here beating up women he is a, a textbook woman beater there's nothing that you could do or say to change that he is officially a woman beater he just loves beating on women and he would never stand up to a man he just loves it's sick he's going to end up killing someone i guarantee it well maybe not because I don't even want to get into it because you never know who's watching because he still does lurk and watch. And this man almost killed me. I have permanent hearing damage in my left ear. He dislocated my left jaw. He broke my front tooth. I have veneers, cracked rib, a lot of things. It's five years ago. But the victim blaming used to be, well, what did you do, Chrissy? Let me tell you something. There's no name I could have called him. There's no nothing 
I could have ever done to deserve being punched in my face for changing a radio station in the car with the, getting my nose bloodied for, for changing a radio station or just any, anything, any reason, just, just anything, just to get beat up, punched in my stomach, thrown into the wall because he didn't believe he was getting paid enough at his job. That's my fault. I would get beat up for that. <laughs> and obviously, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't me because I had a few women contact me with the big black eyes fear and fear of their lives and all the same shit I went through. And <laughs> what did they do? to the same same guy right what did they say to get their nose broken and get beat up so there are men out here <clears throat> that hate women they hate women <clears throat> you got to make sure you don't go out on a date with them yeah it's true so i say you guys got to really conversate i know it's exciting you meet somebody online that looks attractive we're lonely it's promising um wow some companionship it's exciting to get that text from that person and you know it's it's exciting to look forward to meeting them but you really got to try to get um some information before you even meet them in person it's like that out here because some of them really, um, yeah, we were out tonight, uh, me and Dawn. She was at dinner with me tonight. She's been on a murder trial. So my best friend is a criminal defense attorney. And somebody said they haven't seen me with her because all she does is work. She said she didn't even sleep last night. She was so tired at dinner tonight. I just told her, please go to bed now. Make sure you sleep. She got to get up and go to court in the morning. And it's supposed to snow. <clears throat> so. That's right. Any man that puts his hands on a woman is a pussy. I'm sorry. Period. Period. And trust me, any woman that beats on a man is wrong too. But I'll tell you what hurts worse. Walking away and leaving them alone and do not ever contact them again. Because when the person calms down and realize what an asshole they were acting like and that they can't get a hold of you anymore, that hurts way worse than putting your hands on them, calling them names, leaving them alone. That makes them really think about what they said, what they did. And actually you're doing them a favor because sometimes they will actually start working on their behavior to change for the next person. So, um, you know, that's hurt me worse when a guy's like, bitch, you're crazy. I'm gonna leave you the fuck alone. I'm out. That's hurtful. More than them saying, Chrissy, you crazy bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Ah, uh, listen, I don't like how you're acting. I'm going to go be with somebody that doesn't act like this. I'd be like, I guess I have been acting pretty fucked up because this dude don't want to talk to me anymore. And he's such a class act. He's leaving me alone nicely. Damn. I do need to calm the fuck down because this happened to me. I had a guy that left me alone so peacefully and so nice. And I never saw him to this day. And he did it with such class. I just was like, damn, he was a good dude. And you think about it. I lost a good one because he wasn't abusive. He was a nice guy. I was accusing him of shit he didn't do. I was the one who was wrong. Because listen, I can't sit here and say, 
I'm perfect. I'm far from it. I've been abusive. I've been in an abusive relationship, yes, but I've also been the abuser verbally. I've I've looked through guys' phones, which is abuse because that's invading their privacy. I've made threats. I've done it all. I I can say that. I have. I used to be wild. I was wild. I'm not that person anymore. But I can admit that I have been that person. Nobody wants to be accused of shit they didn't do. But I grew up in an abusive home. So I was comfortable with dysfunction, with trauma. And I inflicted that on to pretty much every guy that I dated because I thought that was part of you showing me that you cared was was putting up with my shit and let me see how far I can push you and how much of my shit you'll put up with and how long you'll stick around. It's not love. That's sick. And I, I, I operated in that dysfunction a long time, especially in my teenage years and, and 20s, because that's how I saw my mother act. But that was the example that I had. It's wrong. I've messed up with a lot of really good dudes acting like a fucking psycho cunt. I was. I acted like the psycho bitch. So, you know, I had to take a step back and realize all these dudes ain't having that. They ain't going to be with me. They can go be with a, a woman who's gentle loving, kind, who's not going to give them all this bullshit, conflict, confrontation, accusations, mistrust. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, wow. I need to change. I need to become that nice Chrissy that's really down inside because that's there but I had this hardcore wall built up because I was so afraid of them hurting me before I I was so afraid of them getting me first does that make sense I wanted to hurt them before they could hurt me that way I had an excuse to tell everybody Oh, well, he did this and that and that, and I got rid of him, and that's it. It was, a, it was a defense mechanism. I wanted to try to find something wrong, or, you know, I think he's cheating. You know what I'm saying? And they weren't 90% of the time, but I wanted to find something wrong to self-sabotage and ruin the relationship, because that's all I knew. Because I didn't think I was that worth loving because I had a, a, an abusive mother who, you know, would always tell me, no man's ever going to marry you. You know, you're not the kind of woman a man's going to ever marry, this and that. And I believed it. So I, I think subconsciously I would push them away because I knew eventually that it would end and I didn't want it to even, to get that far, like where I'm closer and, and, and really letting you in. So I push you away and I find any excuse. And then I say horrible things to you or I accuse you of stuff just to get rid of you, which is crazy if you look back at it. Because I think a lot of us have done it. And like I say, I messed up with some good, I mean, good, good dudes. And if I could go back in time, I probably would have married like two of them. But, you know, we got to first admit our bullshit in order to start healing and start working on the issues. We can't start working on what we don't fucking admit to. We don't acknowledge. It's the same with AA. You got to admit you're an alcoholic before you can start working on not drinking, right? There's some people that will still say they're out at, at 60 years old out in the bar every night. I'm not an alcoholic. The whole fucking liver's rotten. They've lost their marriage. They lost their kids. 
their house is gone because they're fucking stone cold drunks, but they're not an alcoholic. So therefore they're never going to go to their grave drinking because they're not an alcoholic. Because if they would have said when they were 35, I have a problem. They may have been able to save their home, their marriage, their liver. You got to admit it first. I could admit I was a psycho fucking bitch. I was a fucking psycho bitch. Um, but then again, not a, every time. I was I was a very good girl too to a lot of them. Yes, exactly. I was I was a very good girl. I got cheated on and a lot of shit that I didn't deserve, which didn't help. Definitely didn't help. <laughs> When If they did the stuff that I thought they were doing and I really found out about it, oh my God. <sighs> I would be devastated. I would cry. And why would you cheat on me? What did I do? How could you? I'd go smash their fucking windows out. All kind of crazy shit. Horrible shit. And I felt... Entitled to do it because they cheated on me. But I never really got to know some of these guys in the first place. A lot of them were cheaters and scum and known for that. And I thought I could change them for some reason. Oh, I'm different. He's not going to cheat on me. I know. This storm. We're about to have a storm. How much snow are we supposed to have? Is it real? It was supposed to snort at 10. Did it start snowing yet? I'm about to get off this live because my battery is very low. But yeah, we'll continue this. I'll save this live and maybe post it on YouTube. Because there's, you know, some shit. But there's so much information that I have personally from growing up in a dysfunctional household. My book is done. I know Pav. Pav knows me in real life. He said, you've been a nutcase. Yes. Do I think I was experiencing karma? Yes and no. I mean, I've had karma, good karma and bad karma. I, I've done more good in my life than bad. Does that make sense? So I'm blessed all the time. Um, yes, miscommunication is a motherfucker. Lots of shit depends on is contingent upon communication. If you don't have communication, everything is going to be misconstrued and, oh, you're disrespecting me. Listen, that's why I don't even like to have big conversations in text messaging because things get misconstrued and out of context. That's why I don't really like to do too much texting because it's like things can go all the way left and that's not even what you meant the communication, there's a lapse in communication and things get, you know, people stop talking to each other over texting because some stupid shit just because of, of wrong punctuation and grammar. Like, and it wasn't even what you really meant to say, but somebody else took it the wrong way. Um, that's why it's important to say, wait a minute, let me pick up the phone. This person's mad and say, you know, let's clear this up for a minute. You got a minute. Can we talk about this for a second? Let me make it clear what I mean. But some people will never do that. Some people don't even have the courage to speak on what's really on their heart and how they really feel about something. So they keep it inside and it just festers. And one time, you know, they'll just disappear, pack up their stuff. And then their partner will come home like, damn, what the fuck? We could have talked about this. Like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? So, in ending this live tonight, when people ask me, am I dating? Not really. Because I still have work to do on myself. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I think, you know, I'm great to be in a relationship. It's fine right now. But the type of men that I choose... I got to really like think about why am I choosing them? Um, and then it's time consuming. 
Like, I got my charity. I got my businesses. I got my pets. Being in a relationship and all that and dating, that's fucking, it's a lot of work, man. You got to think about another person's feelings. It's a lot of stuff. So am I ready for that right this second? Not really. But like what I said earlier, what's for me ain't going to miss me. When it's meant to be, it's going to be. You're not going to be able to avoid it. What's meant to me, I don't got to chase. And I know I don't want to sound like these corny memes and shit, but it's the truth. What's meant to be is going to be. Um, I know a married man ain't for me and someone else's husband ain't meant for me. I know, you know, a lot of things aren't meant for me. A lot of people that are in stages of their life that I outgrew aren't meant for me. I hear the snow on the window. I love it. All right. I love you guys. It's snowing. I'm tired. You see the tiredness in my face? I'm going to post my pictures from earlier. Everybody, thank you for joining in. I love you. Um, I'm tired. I can barely keep my eyes open. And I hear the snow on the window. Yes. What time is it? It's 2 a.m. in the morning in New York. So I love you guys. I'll come on tomorrow. It's going to be a snowstorm, but I'm going to start doing the YouTube. I have everything set up. I don't know why I don't do it. Yes. I got the Bob's out, Pav, for your peeps. Pav is my Indian friend in real life. I've known Pav for years. He gives me the deets on why Indian men love big Bobs. Bobs. All right, guys. Good night, everyone. Stay warm and snuggly. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.